Why do we need to fix our gut to fire up our brain? My name is Christopher Sajnendra. I'm a pharmacist, a high performance executive coach, author and founder of the famous Super Brain Fuel System. And today, I wanted to share with you why we need to fix our gut to fire up our brains. I'll also be introducing you to a secret organ that's controlling your moods and how you feel every day. Did you know that the network of neurons or nerve cells lining our gut is so vast that our gut is now being referred to as our second brain? This complex gut nerve network is used to transmit messages to and from our brains. And interestingly, a growing number of researchers argue that if we are to truly treat mental and psychiatric conditions effectively, we cannot afford to ignore the importance of gut health. Now, you've probably heard of serotonin, the feel-good, happy chemical. Were you aware that almost 95% of our body's serotonin is located in the gut, where it also helps to regulate digestion? I mean, serotonin is the neurotransmitter that plays an important role in helping you feel happy, optimistic, self-confident and positive, while also helping you to get a good night's sleep. Now, while serotonin is found in the brain, the greatest concentration of serotonin is found in our digestive system and not in our brains. And it raises an important question. Could this be the reason why many antidepressants that are meant to raise serotonin levels in the brain aren't as effective as they should be in treating depression? Now, did you know that there is a, a secret organ that's controlling your moods? So what is this secret organ? This secret organ is, in its own right, is our gut microbiome. I call it an organ, along with some others in the scientific community, because of the profound way in which it is affecting our health and well-being every single day. And the gut microbiome is simply the community of trillions of bacteria and microorganisms that live in our digestive system. And collectively, if we were to weigh them, they would be almost 1.4 kilos. That's almost as heavy as a human brain. Now, throughout your gut, an amazing variety of microscopic beings exist in a fine but harmonious balance of life and function. And the more we discover about the function, nature and the number of these little beings, the more it makes us question how human we really are in the first place. Consider this for a moment. Every one of us has about 10 trillion cells. And in comparison, the total number of microbial cells that exist in or on our body is the number as many as 100 trillion. Our human cells are outnumbered by an amazing 10 is to 1 by the number of living microbial cells that call our human body home. Now, does that mean we are only 10% human and 90% non-human? It's crazy, right? I mean, hang on a minute, you say, isn't it our DNA that makes us human? What about our genes? Okay, consider this. The average human has about 20,000 genes in comparison there exist 2 to 20 million microbial genes in our bodies. Just think for one minute. What would be possible if we could manipulate or control the expression of these microbial genes in our bodies by our diet, our nutrition? And what if we could feed this gut microbiome the right foods and nutrition to help increase our own health for the future generations to come? Now what happens when we upset this so-called organ? You see, whenever the gut microbiome is under stress or assault, it activates the gut wall immune system. And when left unchecked, this resulting imbalance in gut flora can further go on to damage our gut walls. And this process triggers an increase in the permeability of our intestine and also allows partially digested microscopic particles of food to leak through the gut wall into the bloodstream. This phenomenon is often referred to as the leaky gut syndrome. While there's yet to be agreement with respect to the leaky gut syndrome in the wider scientific community, the theory behind it does make some sense. You see, when the tiny microscopic food particles and other gut contents start to leak through the lining of the damaged gut wall, our immune system activates a chronic 
low-grade immune response, increasing inflammation, and as a result, many scientists now believe that inflammation also contributes to the development of a number of health-related chronic diseases, such as diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune conditions, cancer, and even a change in an individual's weight and brain health. So I suppose a logical question is, what causes our gut microbiome to go crazy in the first place? Now, one of the major problems with the diet and lifestyle of individuals today is that we rely so heavily on processed foods, on sugar-filled drinks and snacks. And these unhealthy modern dietary choices compromise the health of the good bacteria in our gut while enabling the bad bacteria and yeast to grow unchecked. Now our gut bacteria is also very sensitive to pollution, to agricultural chemicals, to toxins in our food, and even the antibiotics which our doctors prescribe. Now don't get me wrong, antibiotics are a real blessing when you're unwell, and you need them sometimes to overcome a bacterial infection. And often though, they also cause collateral damage where they wipe out a lot of good gut flora as well as you know the bad ones and so while on a course of antibiotics the least you need to consider doing is increasing fermented foods or foods that help replace the good flora that's lost in your diet now good probiotics can also aid the re-establishment of really healthy gut flora so how does one know if the gut flora is really out of balance so what are the, some of the signs and symptoms of an upset gut microbiome I think you'll notice or you'll start to notice things like brain fog, headaches, memory problems, you know, difficulty focusing, fatigue, low energy, depressed mood, anxiety, inability to lose weight when overweight, plus, you know, digestive problems like IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, bloating and constipation. I know it sounds kind of extreme, but I think the question that you're probably most likely asking at this moment is how do we fix the gut now wouldn't it be great to have a system that helps to do exactly this including recipes and suggested healthy eating guidelines to help fix the brain and fire up the gut and you know there is such a system that i'm personally working on and it's called the super brain fuel system you see the through the super brain fuel system we help people discover powerful biohacks and nutritional support to help fire up the brain for a more focused and a more supercharged life. And fixing the gut through a healthy microbiome eating plan is a huge part of the super brain fuel system success. But more about that another time. Here are some things you can do by yourself starting today. Avoid excess sugar and highly processed foods. These often contribute to an overgrowth of unhealthy gut bacteria and yeast, including candida. Get good quality sleep every night. This gives your gut time to, this gives your gut time to repair and helps maintain a healthy microbiome environment. The third thing is work on reducing your stress levels. See, when you're constantly in a fight or a flight mode, your gut's blood supply gets toned down as well, and it makes it harder for you and your gut microbiome to operate at an optimal level. The fourth thing you can do is consume more good fiber. It not only helps you stay regular, it also helps feed the good bacteria while supplying them with beneficial short chain fatty acids, vegetables, fibrous fruits, flax, inulin, and just, you know, just a few of such good foods that you could do. And in order to help your gut microbiome to flourish, you need to feed them prebiotic foods. Now, prebiotics are non-digestible, helpful fibers that enable the good bacteria to stick to the gut wall and help them grow as well. And the fifth thing is consider investing in a good probiotic supplement. You know, probiotics are life-friendly bacteria and other microorganisms which when taken in large doses can actually help improve and maintain good gut health. So I suppose the question is how do probiotics actually help? Well, probiotics help boost moods in at least two important ways. They help in the generation of the neurotransmitter called GABA, which is short for gamma aminobutyric acid, while also making the brain receptors more sensitive to GABA. And GABA has a calming effect on those areas of our brain 
that are overactive in some forms of anxiety and in some forms of depression. You know, another recent study found uh, was done by a French team. It showed that giving humans a specific strain of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium as probiotics for 30 days resulted in beneficial effects, including lowering depression, less anger and anxiety, while giving an increased ability in focused problem solving. So a good quality probiotic supplement should at least contain these two species. If it would be, it would be better, you know, if they were fermented during the making, as it allows the probiotics to be in a healthy bioactive environment and they flourish easily. You know, then there are other factors such as uh, can the probiotics that you're on can they keep well at room temperature, especially as you won't always have access to a refrigerator. We all recognize the beneficial effects of dairy pro products and these products also often contain probiotics and products like yogurt and even dairy providing drinks and in fact it wouldn't surprise me if you are already taking your probiotics in this way however allergy to dairy products lactose intolerance and the extremely high sugar content of these fermented dairy products are a major drawback you see also, these so-called low-fat dairy products simply substitute and remove the fat with high amounts of sugar and replace it with high amounts, high amounts of sugar to, just to make it taste good. And this really defeats the purpose as many times the high sugar content not only causes the gut microbiome disruption, it also affects the brain function in a very negative way. I suppose another question to ask is, are the probiotic capsules that you are taking sugar-free and free from binders, fillers and all the other harmful chemicals? It's also good to know if the manufacturer uses the highest quality raw materials. I mean, most of them swear that they do. Or whether the probiotic culturing, culturing techniques and quality, quality control when they're making the probiotics are in place that you will eventually be you know, consuming these products. So I suppose my advice to you would be choose your probiotics carefully if that's what you're going to have. And as a pharmacist who has helped many patients, uh, many patients struggling with depression and anxiety and brain fog, I believe that pharmaceutical drugs and antidepressants don't hold the full or complete answer to the puzzle. Now while their role in helping us is of great importance, I believe we do need to look at diseases and health conditions in a more holistic way. And the effect of pharmaceuticals once they enter our bodies are sometimes really not as precise as we would like them to be. While meaning to do good, they can also have you know, some unwanted side effects. Yet they're still very important for us to have as a part of our health and wholeness plan. I believe the more we can take advantage of the intimate good health benefits of our gut microbiome and its impact on our health, the more we can enjoy a greater quality and a healthier life. You know, the Greek physician Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, first said in 3rd century BC, all disease begins in the gut. I would like to, if I may add, all good health begins in the human gut you would be crazy to ignore the gut and the role of the microbiome in achieving the best in brain health and in you know, bodily function. So for more great information, you can visit our website at www.superbrainfuel.com. That's www.superbrainfuel.com.